is Swahili for beautiful. Let's journey together here on Zuri TV, hand in hand, arm in arm. Let's navigate today's modern terrain, successfully climb the corporate ladder, raise happy families, build healthy relationships, and positively impact society the godly way. Join me, Ayanda Ali, as we wade through life's everyday challenges and discover God's beauty for ashes. Hello and welcome to what promises to be another thought-provoking episode of Zuri. It's beautiful, isn't it? Is it possible that this is more than just a gorgeous body of water to look at, but some sort of spiritual point of contact? That's what our panelists will be taking a look at today, what we call ancestral worship or African spirituality. And then a little bit later on in the show, we're joined by musician Afro Traction as he speaks to us about the rhythm of life. All right, we are back indoors now to discuss our topic for the day. It is African spirituality, or what some may refer to as ancestral worship. It is such a sensitive topic, and I say this because matters of faith and belief or religion are intrinsic, you know, they're at the core of who we are. And so they are so delicate because if we differ on some of those views, it may be seen as offensive in some quarters. But I think the spirit of what we're here today should always come forward. And that is, as iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens the countenance of man. We're here to build, we're here to learn, we're here to search the scriptures for ourselves, and hopefully at the end of this conversation, come out having a better idea of what God requires of us. My panelists are here, they're ready and waiting, so let's not keep them waiting for too long. We are joined by Pastor Dick Koza. We also have Terelo Mache Ledisa, and she'll correct me if I mispronounced it there. Mache Ledisa, thanks Terelo. In fact, Terelo and I used to work together, so I should know this. You must find me at the end of the show. She's a technical director at a popular 24-hour news channel, but she's here to share her lived experience on the subject matter. We also have Anneli Siswana, who is here in his capacity as a psychologist and a healer. Thank you all very much for your time and welcome to Zuri. Thank you. I guess let's start with the definitions. And, and Pastor Dick, I'm going to start with you here. Some call it ancestral worship. Some call it African spirituality. What do you call it? Well, let me say, as an African, I grew up also calling it that that way, that uh, it was uh, ancestor worship. Mm -hmm. But I then got to know which is, is we don't uh, worship, we venerate, which means we respect those who are dead. When I became a Christian, Jesus is Lord in my life. I cannot go and talk to my ancestors. It's forbidden biblically. You were a born-again Christian, most of your adult life. You start experiencing dreams and nightmares and hearing, uh, calling or visions. And in fact, you documented so succinctly in, in this book of yours that you've written, Voices of Jesus and Ancestors. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what that ordeal was like? It's a serious, serious conundrum because it's, it goes back to identity crisis. Mm. Who am I? And having been born within a Christian home that venerated ancestors. My experience never taught me the ancestors were worshipped. Mm -hmm. But I was misled within the church. Remember, I'm, I'm not saying the whole church, but where I went to, I was taught to hate who I am and where I come from. In a sense that through the process, I lost that the core of myself, which is my identity. Who am I? However, as I grew up, I realized that I will never ever go ahead and undermine those who taught me how to pray, even if they might be gone. Tomorrow, if I need a kidney, it's not from Moses. I will know it be from Judas or any of the biblical character. The blood that runs in here in me is the blood of my ancestors. Therefore, I had to change and I learned a whole lot of things that I was told that with the fact that I hear voices and hear visions. I've been to a psychologist, I've already been to the church, I have been exercised and a whole lot of things. However, the core of me was fighting to come out. And that is a child of ancestors, the child that I really am. 
was longing to come out. And eventually it came out through this book and through loving oneself and their past and who they really are. There's no thing as worshipping ancestors. I have no idea who's ever said that, but that's not the truth. And we have to unlearn that story. Nobody worships ancestors. How do we reconcile using the ancestors as a mediator to God? Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Um, praying to God, <clears throat> pardon me, through my ancestors. Is that, is that the, 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 the framework? Is that the model? Or do we say we just track the lineage of who we are? Help me understand when we say we venerate what that Veneration means. Veneration means respect, isn't it? Yes. Knowledge. So if you go biblically, and Pastor Dick will definitely agree with me on this one, we, we say God is a God of who? Of Abraham, Moses, of Isaac, Isaac, Jacob. Is he, isn't he yes. a God of Ali Payne? Mm. Isn't he a God of uh, Machele Disa? Isn't he a God of Mulefe? Mm. God did not create, create us as afterthoughts. We are all creations of God, aren't we? So it is reconciled already. We have created this chaos ourselves mm. by trying to isolate. And one thing that I struggle with, as, especially, is the fact that it's only in the black culture where we do not acknowledge who we are or where we come from. And we demonize our past, we demonize our dead, we demonize everything. Everything about us is not right. Why? Why is it that my parents, may their souls rest in peace? Why is it that when they are gone, I should not acknowledge them? But I'm going to acknowledge some characters that I actually read about. Remember, I did not choose to be Christian. I was born in a Christian home. Neither did I choose this road, the ancestors. However, as I grew up, and I started finding myself, fortunately for me, and I must say fortunately, I'm lucky enough that I had to go through a route that I, on my own, had to find my truth. Let's speak a little bit about the role of Jesus Christ. Because I think if, if there's any divergence, it's probably at that point. We are all in agreement that lineage is important, heritage is important. The Bible dedicates two books, at least in the Old Testament, uh, in the first and second Chronicles, where the Bible succinctly says, you know, the God, so and so begot so and so, begot so and so. So this tells us that this is a God who's quite serious about where we come from and tracking that journey. And we are all in agreement that it's important for us to acknowledge where we are from. Is, is the, the, the difference then in the, in the role of Christ when it comes to, do we burn in Bepo and ask, the ancestors to kanyisa our way or light our path? Or do we pray and ask the person of Jesus Christ to lead us to the Father? Is that the sticking point? What is African spirituality yeah. and ancestral worship? I believe in the universality of God. And God is positioned through language and certain constructs. And what do I mean by that? In my language, as Anele Siswana, Ongum Kose, who was born into a family of diviners, my language of Ukamata Umvelengang is African. That's my position around the universality of God. So if that is my position, it means my reference, my socialization, and the language of articulation of how I experience and understand God, I understand to tickle on my nyange of a cause. Pastor Dick, I'll let you come in. Uh, yeah, well, I, I differ with my uh, panelists here because they seem not to have a clear cut between God and Satan. It seems with them any, anything <laughs> that's that where the problem is. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let me finish let's, because, let's, let's because, yeah. be, be, because the Bible is very clear yeah. in telling us you can't do this. Yeah. There's nothing like universality in the Bible. It's, it's universal yeah. that God loves us, but God has commandments and restrictions. You can't just do as you please. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that because of the oppression in apartheid, Somehow we need to get to the discussion like this, where maybe we also de-theologize uh, theology so that we separate Western culture and tradition and what they've imposed to us as Africans. Mm -hmm. So that if we say we want to respect those who are dead, it doesn't mean we must go and talk to them. Biblical is not allowed. Jesus refuted it <laughs> point blank. Exodus 20, when they left Egypt, where they were exposed to many gods, 
God specifically told them, you cannot worship or bow to anything or make any image of anything. It's very clear. This Jesus that we see being white, it's also abomination. It's wrong. Yeah. I think also, if I may jump in there, because although we are speaking from an African perspective, for me personally, it's important for us to note that it is not just anti-African if we say don't consult the dead. White people look into a crystal ball, even that is forbidden. It's also wrong. White people would also go to the graves of their departed and, and pray. That is also yes. wrong as, as per the Bible. What is the role of each? What is the role of Jesus Christ in, in, in the way in which you exercise your faith and your spirituality? And what is the role of the ancestors? If we say, if, if I am having a rough time in life, I, cons I consult or I, I she's in pepper to say, please broaden my path, as opposed to saying, dear Lord Jesus, please show me the path. Then we have, du uh, what's it, duplicity. We have a, a duplication, dual walk, a dual yes, walk. Yes, but yes. that duality so, is created by the lack of knowledge. So so that is why I would like to then know, in, in your personal experience, and of course, that's the only experience we can speak of. Exactly. You know, in yes. your personal experience, who does what? Um, I just wanted to, with all due respect, can yes. you remove Satan? Because the minute you start labeling this, it becomes very personal. For someone who has lived an experience where they cannot run away, as a church, we have run away long. We've long run away from the fact that as Africans, most of some of us have had to deal with the reality. Yes, you, you will say that, yes, biblical is wrong, but I did not choose this gift. I woke up and I had this gift. Some of us are experiencing this thing. We are living with it day in, day out. I don't no. understand the issue. What does it mean, the issue of language? L or what does that mean? Because it okay. seems to me we can pick up anything and just fuse it in. I disagree with that. The problem with not theologians who are, are not up dogmatic, okay, let's, yeah, let's, the problem with theologians who are dogmatic and judgmental in their theology, the reason why we have theologies, it's because we see things from different lenses. You can never have a, an eschatological understanding of who Christ is with a Lutheran, with an, a, a charismatic, and, because these people see Jesus from different lenses. Mm. And what I mean by language, do not use a derogative and a challenging language for something that it doesn't make sense to you. Because I myself, I can say, Christians themselves are delusional. But if we narrow this conversation to say the Christian and what the Christian ought to believe, would you then agree that as far as the Christian belief, that the only right way is that Christ Jesus is the mediator? Or are you then saying the Christian has the right to believe in Christ Jesus and the, the right to communicate with their ancestors? Is it, I just want to get your position clear. Yeah, without, logically. Yes. So we believe in African spirituality. There is one God. Yes. However, the lens is at which we come to the very same God. You may be Hindu, you may be all of that, and again, it's different perspectives. They all help us to understand this one universality of God. However, for pastors and some theologians who do not do scriptural and theological justice, they would always use that text against other forms of spirituality. Yeah, but my problem with you, my brother, is the fact that you are using theology. We're not talking about theology. We're talking about what this Jesus... No, no, no. We're talking about what Jesus said. If you want to tell me that Jesus did say we can worship him and add this and this. I'm fine with it. Just show me. It's not this but my this. point is this. I have no problem with you worshiping God, whether you have 100 people. I'm not a Hindu. In Hindu, you can have 100 gods. That's not my problem. But those people, including a person like you, I see you as a prospe prospective candidate for me because I want to win you to Jesus. I see you as oh, lost. Jesus won me a long no. time ago. Then I love you. You'd agree? Mm -hmm. I do. I, I, obviously, I, I yeah. agree with him a lot, a lot more than I would with the pastor. And also, remember, I'm a Christian, right? I'm a Christian, and I, I was saying, "Let me tell you, Papa, you a wait, Christian. wait. Let me it's a faith in Christ, isn't it? Uh, yeah, because I, 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 I well, accepted Christ in my life when I was nineteen years. What does that mean? What does that mean? I was fighting myself. I already had the voices at the age of nineteen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And within I that, <laughs> what, what does that mean? you see, with me, yeah. I am. I'm still on the process. Yeah. Right. But I have finally made peace with who I am because for a long time I was running from myself. And like he says, he's a psychologist, right? 
So I had to see a psychologist because at one point I thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. At one point I was like, I have been to a depression hospital. I've been through it all because I was running away from see, who I am. So what happens when you run away from yourself? I went around in circle like the Israelites, 40 years of wilderness because I did not want to accept my calling. I could not. Honestly, I could not. It was a difficult yeah. thing. You know why it was difficult? Because the church had demonized it. I always say, I know fully well yes. where I'm from and I love it, you know? And then I see it in our bone structure. I see it in the way we carry ourselves. But having said all that, the love and the respect and the affinity I have with my people from where I come, for me, ends and begins there. I do not believe that they have a say that I can go to them and say, you know, doors are not opening, open them for me. I don't believe that I can say, please ask the father to forgive me. But again, that is my belief. And that is the beauty of this rainbow nation that we live in, in that we are all entitled to what we believe. I have thoroughly enjoyed picking your brains. I hope you come back next time again when we invite you. We still have a whole I'm lot sorry to talk for about. If I cannot judge my Now, I have it on good authority that you were born in Zwandile Moya. Yes. How and when did we get Afro tracking? Initially, we were a band. Okay. Um, so, so uh, I'm a band. I'm a Beyonce, I'm a, you know, the, uh, the kind of drummer. So, um, uh, one thing led to another, but uh, so everybody left. I had to take the torch uh, and, and, and go, go with it. But I also feel like we're starting the, the conversation right at the end, <laughs> when you've made it. Speak to me about the many, many, many years. Um, a family of eight kids, uh, mom and dad in the same house. So I sing about love and uh, growth in relationships, mainly because they say you, be, be, you become what you behold, oh. you know. So I give the love that I saw when I was growing you up. You saw love in action. You know, so, yeah, so me and my siblings either play or sing. Uh, yeah, play an instrument or sing one way or another. Uh -huh. So yeah, we are all in, 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 in the same space. So then you go from Bumalanga to Johannesburg, um, Gauteng, because you have a deal. It deal, how did that come about? It deal is a... <laughs> uh, so, so I have friends, musical friends, uh -huh. um, uh, from church, um, and church gets connected to another church, another congregation somewhere, somehow. So uh, it's a long story, but... The one family friend had a meeting with uh, Jeff Maluleke, I think, the, the week before yeah. at the, uh, the same record company. So that deal didn't uh, pull through. So he thought, let me not waste going there. So he fetched me, gave me a lift. I remember we drove in the car the whole day because the car was not well. So he was taking it to, to be fixed in oh. Pretoria. So yeah, we drove the whole day, you know, uh, <laughs> was a long journey, but it was worth it. Yeah. No, looking back now, I'm sure you would agree that it was worth it. But at the time then, did you know that you would become this household name that we love and celebrate in South Africa? I'm sure you hoped, but did you think that you would make it? Look, as Christians, we, we, we always depend on, on the prayers. Yeah. You know? So once we prayed for it, we believe it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that's been the drive all, all through, throughout my life. And uh, I got there, you know, I started mingling with different people. Uh, one thing that I was lucky um, uh, about is I never became uh, a street kid like other yeah. people, you know. So I, I moved from there and then there was another friend who had moved here uh, the year before. So I stayed with him. It just happened blessings, with grace, you know. Blessings so, after blessings. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. What what changes? Did you ever experience the shock of success? Like, yo, I've made it now. I've arrived. They know my name. <laughs> I'll tell you of the first experience when I was, uh, when I first heard my song on radio. Uh. Uh, I was in a taxi. So I had just gotten here. So I'm in a taxi and, you know, it's pumping there. And I'm, I'm all alone going to the studio. You know, I couldn't really share the joy with the people in there. Driver, you, know, driver, you know, so but me. you know that really built me up to wow. say, God is really out there looking out for me. So uh, 
were there any times when you look back and you were like, this was really challenging, this was really hard? Were there any obstacles along the way or God really just cleared the path for you? Um, I lost my mother when I was young and that really just built me up as a stronger young boy, yeah. you know. Um, and coming to Joburg, getting all the disappointments, you know, I'd, 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 I'd always wanted to feature like important people on my projects, you know. So that there was days when I booked people, booked the studio, wait there, nobody shows up. You know, I won't mention names, but it happens, you know. So that would have been a breakdown, a breakdown point for me. But I kept on going because I know this thing, someone is going to hear the noise I'm trying to make Come one day. You know, so. so you always kept the faith. I like it. Let's talk about when you forgot the lyrics to the faith, I guess. <laughs> My producer tells me that, <laughs> that there was one show, a gospel show, that you were uh, performing at or ministering, and you were supposed to sing Tzotle, Tzotle di, Tzotle di, di and Tzotle when I, and then I said Tzotle baby, Tzotle baby, cause I'm in love. And then the, and then the Barcelona are like, oh my goodness. And then next morning I see this thing is trending on, on, on social media. So I decided the song is already famous. Yeah. Tzotle baby, so I'm gonna write a song. <laughs> that was always, I, I so believe it's the first to... song that became famous before it was written. Yeah, sing, I was just trying to... Sing Tzotle Baby for me, how does it go? The new one or the old the, one? The new one. Because like, Tzotle Baby. Mm, 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 Tzotle my darling. Yeah. Mm, 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 so, so what I'm doing, baby. everything I'm doing for you. Okay, okay. And then you were forgiven for the original Zosha Baby. I think after you sang the second version, we were like... I think now I even own that first. We will forgive him. I, I own we the will original. Forgive him. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the future now. What does it have in store for you? What do you still hope to achieve? I want to be known for 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 for, for positive message, mm -hmm. uh, whether within the gospel space or within the secular space. Uh, because I sing about love, and I think uh, God is love, mm. and I'm already preaching, you know. Come on, but I wanna. <laughs> um, I have a gospel album. I also, uh, I also wanna push that side of of Afro traction because people know me as just the singer. So I'm trying to uh, uh, put myself out there as the producer guy to go to mm. in terms of putting a song together. So uh, yeah, so. I, I'm, I'm more about collaborations because that's the one way I, I can uh, put what I want to be known as against another artist, mm. you know. So it's just collaborations, more and more of that, mm -hmm. whether within the gospel space or, or the secular space. Parting shot, last message. If someone is at home and they're looking at you and they're like, wow, you know, his journey is so inspiring. I have a dream. It may not be music. It may be something else, but I really mm. want to pursue the will of God for my life. And I really want to experience his blessing in this regard. What would your advice be? My dream was to one day, whether be heard on, t on radio or be seen on TV or be on a big stage. Yeah. Um, so church kept me within that space in terms of uh, uh, accumulating uh, uh, more skill because mm. uh, I became the guy that would fill up the space when the bass guitar guy was not there, when the pianist was not there, when the drummer was not there. So that's how I learned all the different instruments. So being in the space really kept me going. Mm. So if you have a dream, keep within the space and then the rest falls into place. That's, that's how it worked for me. Ooh, I love it. I'm already in the space. We're in the Zuri space. And uh, we really thank you for having joined us. Let us go and take some of those nuggets now that we gleaned from Afrotraction and pray about it right on over to the prayer wall. We've come to the end of yet another thought-provoking episode of Zuri. I hope that if anything, this episode will have you searching the scriptures that much more and finding out what you believe. Here's what I believe. God is a jealous God. He will not share us with any other deity. 
not with money, not with fame, not with success, and not with ancestors. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that if you are neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm instead, God will spit you out. So choose ye this day whom you will serve, what you believe. I believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, that is not to say that I am not an African woman who celebrates her Africanness. In fact, I am proud of my history. I am proud of the people from whence I emanate. I am Umachola, Umpangomo, Utengeba, Tololum Tokwas, Ngwanya. That is my testimony, that is my history, and that is my lineage. I think it's important that we live by conviction, and that conviction should carry us. And so that is the first prayer point for today. We'll jot that down. Conviction. I'm gonna have to bend for this one. Conviction. And then speaking to Afro-Traction also, just a moment or two ago, I was just quite amazed about how, yes, we must work hard, yes, we must labor, but there's an element of grace, there's an element of faith that comes to play. So we ought to pray that God blesses us, that he would bless us coming in, bless us going out, that blessed must be the fruit of our labor and blessed must be the work of our hands. So let's pray for blessings. Uh, space over here. Blessings. There we go. Let's leave it there, at least for the time being. We'll do it all over again next week. Don't forget, you can't pray and ask God for blessings. <laughs>